Hi, and welcome to the third and final part of my, my Classic Licks lessons on, on the playing of Pat Hare. And if you're new to his style, I recommend that you listen to some of the tunes, his solo tunes, uh, Gonna Murder My Baby, and Bonus Pay. I know those are on YouTube. He's got one he did with James Cotton called Cotton Crop Blues. He also did some songs with Walter Bradford in the Big City Four. There's one called Reward for My Baby. And let me look, what was the other one I had? Oh, I, cur oh, that's the wrong one, hang on. Uh, Too Blue to Cry, he does that one. He did some tunes with Ma Rainey in the early 50s. He played on a lot of the guys who recorded his son, Roscoe Gordon, who played on some of his songs. So if you get out there and, and look up his discography, I'll try to list some of his tunes on the description for the lesson here. Last part, no discussion of Pat Hare's playing would be complete without the power chords. And he didn't use any real sophisticated, complicated chords, but he played them viciously. That's a good adjective to use with his playing. And probably the best example of his chords is from the tune Cotton Crop Blues. And when I listen to it, mostly I hear him using either a first position major bar chord like that, which you hear in a lot of his tunes. I don't know if he uses that necessarily in Cotton Crop Blues. But a lot of times he'll use that over the one instead of like a D9. Don't recall him using that one too much. So D chord, just an F shape, bring it from down here up to the 10th fret, to the 12th fret. And I'll show you some examples of that. Also, second position ninth chords. So if you don't know those, I've got my if I'm going to play a G ninth, I've got my first finger on the ninth fret of the fourth string, second finger on the tenth fret, which is my G of the fifth fifth string, and then my ring finger is flattening out, getting the last three strings on the tenth fret. So the whole chord. And one of the unique things about Pat Harris playing is the way that he goes into those power chords. So if he's playing a, a song in D, the 5 is going to be an A9. So you do something like this. You know, playing those really loud, distorted, powerful chords. And that's something that's really neat. Now I tabbed out some simple examples for you. One is the way he goes into the 4. And a lot of times over the one, he'll play these single string runs. So something like this from Cotton Crop Blues. So he's playing this over the one. Goes into the four. And he goes into the five. throw in some more single string. A lot of times when he does the four, he just strum that chord and leave it hanging. Every now and then he'll do the, the slides when he plays with Junior Parker. That's the other guy Pat Hare played with quite a bit, was Junior Parker. So again, let's do that lick one more time. This is the first example for the chords, power chords. combine his single string runs and then go into those chords. And he'll throw it again over the five, over the four, but over the one, he's usually playing the single string stuff. So the two examples going into the four, he's just sliding it from one fret above. So in this case, it would be an E, or uh, what would that be? G, A, A flat ninth. Is that right? A flat ninth. It's like this. And when he goes into the five, he's going from B flat ninth to A. So those
those are some simple ideas, his power chord playing. I'll show you a couple other examples here with some licks that he uses based on, on chords. The most predominant lick that you'll hear in his playing, which really sounds cool, is this diminished chord shape that you'll hear him use in several of his songs, including I'm Gonna Murder My Baby and Cotton Crop Blues. And if you're playing in G, there's my first position, G major, bar chord, F shape. This diminished that I'm going to use is played right here. It's the same finger position as a ninth chord, first position ninth chord. So this would be a B flat ninth. Take everything, move it over. Get a G diminished. So I've got my first finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string. Got my second finger on the fifth fret of the second string. Got my ring finger on the sixth fret of the third string, and my pinky is on the sixth fret of the first string. And like T-Bone Walker and Pee Wee Creighton and some others, he's going to play that chord and then vibrate it and really, really drive it home like this. <laughs> and you'll hear him use that lick as his solo, like in I'm Gonna Murder My Baby, he does something like this. Let's see if I can get this right. So he starts out the solo. But to start out the solo, he's playing that chord and bending it up and bringing it back, which is a, a very typical thing. This little bass thing I did, I think I missed a note there. It goes, there's a note in there. I transcribed that or tabbed it out for you. Listen to the solo, and I'm going to murder your baby, and you'll hear what I'm playing here. So, I didn't play that exactly right, but I'm trying to show you that chord shape. Now, in another tune called Cotton Crop Blues, he does something similar, but with a little different wrinkle, using a major, or a, major, a ninth chord. So, we're going to move everything here. Here's our D, first position bar chord. And that same lick is going to be anchored on the D on the fourth string, which is at the twelfth fret. Make that same shape. And he does this chord walk with a major or first position ninth chord. So the chord itself, here's D9, which is where he ends up. First finger is on the ninth fret of the fifth string. Second finger on the ninth fret of the third string. Pinky, or I'm sorry, ring finger is on the 10th fret of the 4th string. Pinky is on the 10th fret of the 2nd string. And just move that chord shape down or up. And that's where he starts it from. So move it over. He does something like that. I don't know if I have that exactly right, but I've got the tab for it. So he starts out the solo in Cotton Crop Blues. And then into the, the single string stuff. But again, that shape really a kind of a awesome sound very powerful and that's where Pat Hare with those ninth chords and those diminished chords that's where a lot of his signature sound comes from so that's from Cotton Crop Blues one last thing with the major chord there's a, a tune he does with Walter Bradford where he does a solo can't remember which one it is. I think Reward for My Baby or one of those where he plays. He does something like that where he's just playing a major chord. So instead of just doing the double stop. Like 
that to kick off the solo. He's playing the whole major chord. You can hear that powerful sound that you get with it. He does this little bass walk. from the sixth or from the eighth fret of the fourth string to the seventh to the sixth. So the leg and then into the over the four chord in the solo. So in Pat Harris playing you have a lot of use of these power ninth chords. He also uses a major chord quite a bit, first position bar chord without the bar. Mostly just F shape as a solo, a solo lick, or also as a rhythm part. And then he's got these diminished chords. If I'm playing in B flat, which he uses in lots of different ways. So hopefully these three lessons have given you some ideas from Pat Harris playing. Maybe you've seen these before. Maybe you know these licks. Like if you've listened to T-Bone Walker at all heard that one before, but maybe you haven't. So my hope is that I put enough lessons out here that you'll find one where you can learn something that you didn't know before, especially you guys who are just really getting started in this kind of guitar playing. That is my Classic Licks lesson for the month of March. I will come back in April with another Classic Licks lesson. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do yet. I've got some requests for some different guitar players. I've got a couple of jazzier lessons some blues licks from Charlie Christian, Tiny Grimes, guys like that. I've got all kinds of stuff. So hopefully you enjoy this lesson. Give me some comments, some feedback. Let me know what you thought. And I'll be back next month with another classic licks series of lessons.